yeah. at the same time, when I get no feedback at all, it makes me uncertain whether I'm making a difference or not. Mm -hmm. And when I get negative feedback, it makes me not want to do it because I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do this for? Yeah. I mean, especially in relationships, if you give me negative feedback, I'll take that negative feedback and see if I can improve. But if I continue to receive negative feedback after negative feedback after negative feedback, eventually I'm going to say, fuck, I'm not going to do it. Welcome to the God, Money, and Sex podcast. My name is Raul Velasquez, and I'm here with my beautiful wife. Vivian Velasquez. Welcome, girl. So excited to be here. It seems like uh, we're doing this every single week. You get more Yay. beautiful every week. Oh, you're so sweet. So uh, last week we were in Texas. We were in Dallas. We went to see Allison Armstrong. What an amazing conference. We haven't been in a conference in quite some time, we one usually, like this. We usually attend at least one or two conferences yeah, a year. Yeah, we do. But we haven't been this year to one. You and I together, we've done different things. And this was one of, really, it really blew my mind. If you don't know Allison Armstrong, she is an amazing person. Not only an amazing person, but she's an author. She has an amazing book, Keys to the Kingdom. Um, pick it up. Another one is uh, The Queen's Code. Pick it up. And she has a couple of different audiobooks that if you haven't heard her audiobooks, they're just been studying men really for the past amazing. 35 years. I mean, I was yeah. interested in seeing it because I want to see what a woman's perspective is when she's been studying men for 35, 35 years. And yeah. she was dead on. I yeah. mean, men, we are, we're simple creatures. Yeah. We're simple creatures, but yet we seem to fuck it up. It's funny <laughs> how to, how she has complicate things. She has like I don't know if she has any books on it, but she has the the audio books. She has like one or two for men, because you know like how you say they're so simple, and then for a woman there's like five, it's a whole or library, seven it's a whole library. Yeah, I think she's smart because she picked this topic, studying men, because she realizes how simple we are. We're not complicated, so we could definitely be studied. Yes, but then at the same time, how she's saying like she's still learning and she's still you know, has so much to learn from men because you guys are simple, yet there's so much to learn. But the thing is because we, um, you know, we are primal in our behavior, right? And one of the things that we talked about at the event was partnership. Yes. You know, the dance of partnership. At the beginning, yes. I thought you brought me to a dance uh, course. A when dance I saw, I saw, contest? <laughs> I saw the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the sign at the event. It says the dance of partnership. So yes. I thought we were going to do like little tango or salsa dancing. Yes. But uh, the dance of partnership, I mean, that... That in itself is like, you have to, I, I mean, it, if you would take me to like a dance place, I'd be like a little bit scared because it's like, do I really know how to dance? Do I really even want to dance? And who am I going to be competing against? Is it myself or is it But you and I have had dance us? classes. I mean, yeah. we've done tango classes. We've done salsa. We've done merengue. I mean, we know how to dance. Don't, and, and don't act like we don't have rhythm. I know. We I have, have rhythm. rhythm. I have rhythm. But then at the same time, like looking back and all those times, it's like, I feel the pressure to have to, you know look good with you and then when i just let go and have fun by myself to be honest i have more fun dancing by myself um so are you not saying in a dance are you class. saying i'm a bad dancer no i am the I bad I'm a, dancer I'm, I'm thinking i'm a good dancer you are I a think, great dancer I, I, could, I could dance i think we, we should join a competition of dancing oh no and see how good we oh, do no. I'm, I'm that confident in oh, your no. dance moves no, girl no, no. I'm that confident. I feel like I have two left feet. I feel like I have a lot no, of rhythm you have in a my lot body. Of, you, have, you have a lot of grace. I mean, when, you make <laughs> me look good when I dance. But we're not, we're not talking about that type of partnership, all right? So yes, let's, let's, yes. let's focus on the topic, which yes. is, you know, what makes a partnership work? And one of the things that she said that I loved was in this time of age, there are a lot of relationships, but there are very few partnerships mm. because in partnerships, it takes a lot more awareness, a lot more work, a lot more dedication, a lot more responsibility to have a partnership. So if you think about like partnerships with business is the same thing, how you would think in a partnership in a relationship, in a relationship. Absolutely. and it, it does take a lot of work. And I think that's when, when she was talking about, you know, different types of partnership and it really, I, I tied in that because I'm constantly thinking yes, about business. business I'm yeah. thinking about, Relationships, I, I believe everything is tied into one. Yeah. So the same way that we act in our relationship is the same way that we act in our business partnerships. So many times we just, like I said, we have relationships, but there is no really, there's no partnerships. Yes. Like we have uh, expectations of other people, but we're not really clear about what those expectations are. So then for me, it was very clear that a lot of why, why there's a lot of 
difference between a relationship and a partnership. So in a business, when you start a partnership, there are contracts that are signed. There's agreements, you know, agreements that are made. There is there's a like a it's whole clarity. list, right? It's there's clarity. a lot of clarity. But then we go back home and do we have those same agreements, that same clarity when it comes to the relationship between a husband and wife or a mother hmm. and a son or a daughter or, you know, whatever relationship you want to look at it. And it made me realize, like, Sometimes we just act by default when it comes to relationships. To I mean, we jump back into home. those roles. I mean, we assume. Yeah. I mean, yes. I, I, like what, one of the exercises that she did, one of the exercises that she put out there immediately she says, pick a partner, right? Right. And be either the provider or the receiver. Yeah. And unconsciously, you I said I was a provider because yeah. that's what I do. I provide. Yeah. And, and I think that's where men, you know, we have this unconscious belief that we have to be the providers. We have to be the givers and we give in and we give in and we give in. Yeah. And we have a hard time receiving. At least yeah. that's the truth for me. Yeah. That, that's that's true for me that I like to give. I don't ask for things, uh, you yeah. know, hardly ask for certain things. And if I ask for something, I'll get it myself. Yeah. Right. So I, I have to learn from my part of the partnership to yeah. receive because the moment that I rob you from you giving me something. Yeah. Then there's not really a partnership. It's more of of uh, an assignment yeah and i think that was one of the conversations that we had even like last year when it came to our our sexual interaction it's like you need to learn to how let to me give yeah, you how to let go. the same thing that i you know like it's not always about you giving me and i get it that you love me and you want to please me and you want to like have me in ecstasy all you know all day and all night that's the goal is the goal it i mean is, as a man i think like, that you we, do, we got yeah. it's like what she said is like men we are hunters right yes. and we're looking for the deer the deer the deer, the deer. so when not it comes deer, to sex deer. like there's an outcome yeah orgasm right and if, I, if we don't have an orgasm then i fail yes uh, that's at least a primal part the primal mind yes but so then we, that could be so narrow it is narrow that's the reason yeah. that we you know as men we don't know how to really have epic sex we just know how to have orgasms yeah and, and and that's okay because that's that's like you know like you say you're hunting the deer you have a target but also another things that i love that she said is like we are so accustomed in our brain in our relationships to go fast all the time so like for men or for women you know that like you want to get to the end result as quickly. soon as possible you know like you know the this least way amount of, the least yeah. amount of casualties yes and that's how we win yes but in in relationships it doesn't work because you have to be slow patient down. and slow, slow down. down so you know one of that's one one of my many attributes is i really slow down and i really like take the time to slow you down and, and i used you to take i used to argue to with you up. at that point because i used to hate the fact that with you i had to slow down yeah. and, and i used to uh create a story that that was like i need to go somewhere maybe i need to catch up yeah but now i'm understanding that it's not about you catching up it's yeah. about me also seeing and enjoying the process yeah. because it's not about getting there it's just can we slow down to see the beauty can we slow down to appreciate this can we slow down not to make mistakes can we slow down to do things right as opposed to just doing it for the sake of time and and when it comes to the partnership i think that's the part that we were talking about is the accountability right so let's give us some framework so i, I did a little training for my clients as soon as i came back i mean we, yeah. we landed uh, in yes, New York, yes. and I came to the studio, and I said, "Guys, yes. we have a little training because it's yes. fresh from my mind." I said, "I want to give you this this information because I think it's valuable, not just in your relationship, but it's also in business." Partnerships. So I, I created this presentation. I want to share with the listeners here. Number one thing: what what are the elements of partnership? So the number one thing is accountability. Mm -hmm. In a partnership, you need accountability, but accountability sometimes people mistake accountability for hand holding. Like I'm gonna yeah. hold you accountable. But then I'm going to hold your hand. But what's really accountability? Accountability is can I count on you to do this? And I think also what we we say that, okay, can I count on you? But then the bigger understanding behind that for me was can I count on myself to tell you what I really need in this partnership? Can I be honest enough to tell you what I need in this partnership? Like before in our relationship, maybe I could say like, you know, we did things by default. But the reason why we're doing this podcast, the reason why we do the Facebook lives and all this post is like to bring you guys a Awareness. different perspective yeah. of how to have a relationship, you know, like all the things that maybe we've messed up on that we're trying to to do better and bring awareness to it so it's like okay what accountability do i have to myself to to speak my truth to really like honor myself because it comes from a different place and having to do it and i think that it comes to 
making the choice. I mean, one of the distinctions that we found is that there's a primal mind, right? That yes. is looking for a win at all costs. Like we want to turn a no into a yes. We want to say, okay, I'm going to do this. And if you say no, I'm going to find a way to convince you or to, to manipulate change, you to, to change, change your, your mind. mind. And we do this unconsciously. We try to manipulate the situation unconsciously. Yes. But when we bring awareness to that behavior, then we can make a conscious choice to create a partnership. Yeah. And that's kind of like in a soul level or, or a different level, not just the mind of I'm going to get you to do something that I want you to do, but a partnership. Say, is, this good, is this what she wants? Yeah. And is this going to help both of us, not just one person? And that's when your relationship starts to grow, because then you're not only thinking about yourself, but you're thinking about the other person. But a, and, but right? a, you hold the other person accountable to honor themselves, and you are you're accountable to your honoring yourself as opposed to waiting for the other person to fulfill you. Yeah. Or you fulfilling the other person. Say that one more time. So you're waiting for the other person to fulfill you, or you are trying to be or you're trying to fulfill the other person. Yeah. That's not accountability. That's yeah. trading. Yeah. Like I'm gonna do something for you, mm -hmm. so you could do something for me. Yes, I I believe accountability for me is can I count on you whether I'm showing up or not? Can I count on you for, to do this? Can I count on you because you agreed on it? Yeah. And if I if, if I'm hold myself accountable to do my part, then we're gonna grow. And in that time, you have to honor yourself and say like, okay, what he's asking me for, what she's asking me for, can I really be trusted? to do what I'm going to say, say that I'm going to do. And I think a lot of the times in the past, like I've just said yes, because I felt like, okay, he needs me to say yes, or he needs me to say, you know, to do something. And I would say yes, because I feel pressure or maybe because you're, you know, I already feel you trying to change my mind. <laughs> and I then already I have the yes. Jedi, the Jedi master yeah. moves on you. Yeah. So I say yes, when it was a no. Hmm. And then when you say yes, when it was a no for whatever situations, so there could be out. very many, it, works out. it doesn't work out the way that it has to work out. And, and most of the time it, it just Somebody gets messes hurt. up. It just messes up one way or another. And then you come back and you realize like it was a true no for me. Like why was not accountable? Why was I not accountable to myself to speak my truth? <laughs> And Why? that's when you do things half ass and yeah. you mess up the situation. Or worse, you don't do them at all. Or or you feel obligated. So, yeah. you know, number, number one thing is accountability. The second yeah. thing is uh, a connection with trust. Uh, are you connecting and can you can I trust you? Can I trust you to do this? Do you trust me or do I trust myself? So in a partnership, it's so key to have that trust factor yeah. that you could count on that person, yes. that they have the capacity, the willingness, and even the desire to do it. Yes. I love that trust. Trust. I mean, and sometimes when they break the trust, is it, you know, I think that in relationships, there's going to be some times that they're going to fuck up. Of course, I mean, because I, we're human. I mean, we're human. I mean, I fucked up many times. Yes, How so do you I. replenish the trust? I, I know I don't I mean that's like a whole deeper subject about trust and there are so many relationships and partnerships that trust has been broken that it takes time for you to get back that trust and I know like for men sometimes they get frustrated because they're like okay well she's not doing this and she's not giving in into what I'm trying but it's like you know you messed up once you, now you got to make up for it I'm not saying like long term yeah, but it takes time and I think and I think it also has to do with you know, trusting on the timing. Like if people make a mistake, you trust yeah. that, okay, it happened, what, what am I learning from it? Yeah. Am I becoming a better human being from to learn from this? Am yeah. I, is she becoming better? Am I becoming better? And trust the fact that if you messed up, you got to learn from it. Yeah. And and we have a lot of people that, you know, we all have issues with, with trust. trust. Yeah. The third um, element of partnership is creativity, meaning can the partner see the vision? Can you create that vision together because you know vision is is not something that you could see vision is can you see the unseen mm -hmm. and, and can you see the vision of where we're going can mm -hmm. can you partner be in it with the vision can both of you create that reality based on the vision that is presented and at the same time i feel like you know you need to be creative and have your own vision of what it looks like for you because i know like at the beginning like you were very clear on your vision and you were so great at sharing it with me and even though i truly didn't maybe get it or understand it i believed it i just you know didn't really get it fully in my body i still trusted that that was your vision so once it be, once you got on board of my vision then little by little you start developing your own vision yeah 
Yeah. And I think in partnerships, it can be some just one vision. Yeah. It can just be one visionary. I mean, you could mm -hmm. go far and you could have some type of success or accomplishments with one yeah. vision, but eventually in partnerships, you have to be both of people have to be in. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, some of the challenges that, you know, I, I talk to my clients about is what if she's not on board with your vision? What if, you know, she doesn't see the vision or what if, you know, like she fights your vision? Well, it's your vision. It's yours. It's, it's your yours. baby. Yeah, it's, you, you guard it's like it. You, you got to continue to fulfill your vision and, and yeah. feed your vision until she buys in. Because most of the guys that, that I know that we all have big visions, mm -hmm. but our actions don't match what our vision is. Yeah. And I think it's scary for the woman to be on the other side. It's like there's such massive growth on the side of, of the partnership. And, and it's scary and it comes more from a place of fear mm. that, you know, what if like my little vision doesn't match his big yeah. vision? Or my less than. Yeah. And then I think the more that you guys continue to live and like you're saying, like, you know, that your actions speak louder than words. So like, what are you doing to match your vision? Then ours will continue our vision, our dreams, you know, because like, I feel like God puts different dreams into each person. And when you're in a partnership, they almost like start to like you know, come together and, and make this beautiful yeah. masterpiece. But it takes time it for you to put this clay together and to see like whatever shape it's really going to be. And the clay could be molded in so many different, you know, ways as, you can, as you it can, evolves. And you can't be attached to what it looks like only for you. Because when you have a yeah. partner, you have to have the feedback and the input from that partner to, to bring in that vision. Yeah. I think a lot of us, especially men, we get frustrated because we don't see... We want the vision to be our vision. Yeah. And when women want to change things, we're like, yeah. no, 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 woman, this is not how I'm in picture. I'm picturing this. And I think the same thing with women. Like, I have this vision. And when the yeah. man is not involved in the vision, I want to change things. Yeah. In partnership, you have to have the trust. And the next thing that brings us back to clarity, be in the same page. Yeah. Is the vision the same as hers? Is hers the same as his? And is there clarity? Are you in the same page? But then for them, for you guys, for us, for you to be in the same page, you have to be clear on what you want yourself. And again, you know, we always go back to the same thing. Like you and I, we are, we're in such a great partnership. But before that ha that happened, we had to get clear ourselves as to what I wanted. Uh, and, it was, and it took me a really was long gonna, time. I was gonna say, we, it was some times that we were not in the same page. At we were all. not even in the same book. At all. <laughs> we were not even in the same book. Forget about being in the same page. Yeah. We were not even in the same book. But little by little, because we got clear. I mean, that's yeah. that's where the clarity comes in. You got to be clear about where what you want. You got to be clear yeah. about the vision. And it doesn't necessarily mean like... Like a lot of people, I get questions all the time. Like, Raul, what if I'm not clear? What if I'm uncertain about my purpose? What if I'm uncertain about this? Like, yeah. just be clear today about what you accomplish. And little by little, you start, you're going to start to see the vision. Yeah. And I think we we want to have this illusion of greatness, an illusion of like a big, audacious purpose that we discount the purpose that we are living today. Yeah. On the little impact or the big impact that we're making today. Like, imagine, like in this podcast, I would love to have millions of listeners but i i'm here to serve those people that are listening yes. i'm not attached to how many people listen to this i'm not attached to people who view my videos i'm constantly focused on the value that i bring whether it's one person or millions of people i'm still going to show up the same way yes and eventually it will be if that's what you want if you're clear on the vision you're going to continue to do the podcast you're going to continue to reach out like you always do and it's going to reach out you know that many people if that's what you want because you do the work because it's clarity it's clarity so then when it when it comes to like doing all that stuff like for us it's like we've gotten clear of what what can we bring into the relationship so we could bring love and power to other couples so it's like how can we do that for others if we don't have that ourselves so we've gotten very clear as to like what who you and i are together so we could be together in sync or sometimes out of sync and get back into it to be able to serve others and that's it comes to the second i mean the second the, i think the fourth step which is consistency or the fourth element oh, yeah, is perfect. Consistency. Yeah. perfect because if you're yeah. not we could be in the same page one day and we could just jump to another book another day. It's consistency of, at least I guess a consistency of, of playing the game. Yeah. I mean, we are, you know, we've been doing this for almost 20 years, right? Right. We've been in this partnership. And the one thing that I see in you, the consistency that you bring is that you want to be in partnership. And I, I want to be in partnership, yeah. right? So the consistent battle Oh, and I think people give up too quickly because, you know, they want they, they think that if I get out of this partnership, 
I'm going to find another partner. That's better. That's better. Yeah. But the reality is that you bring the old habits or the bad partnership habits from this relationship to the to next another one. relationship and yeah. you still have a bad experience because you haven't fixed what's the most important, which is having the clarity of how to be a good partner. Yes. And it's so funny you say that because like I remember we went to a seminar and they asked us to introduce ourselves. And it was truly what I felt at the moment. I said, you know, I've been married to this man for I think it was like 15 years at that time. And I said, I've been married for 15 years, but I could honestly say I am I've been madly in love with him for the past five years. So not to say that I didn't love you when we got married, but it's like I am so like in this partnership so in in the relationship like all in that there is nothing more that i want than to continue to grow in our partnership. partnership and and it was truly honest what i was feeling at the moment and ever since then it's just been you know growing and getting better and continue to be consistent in the things that i feel and i i laugh at myself because like when i write on my journal if i'm like if i am consistent as i am to my partnership if i am consistent as i am to my body i will have like <laughs> the most rocking body but that's my next thing you know that's like my next level what i need to do we all have stuff to work on. we all have things to do but yeah i do i commit myself you know 100 percent to my relationship to you like every single day it's like you know we say to each other it's like i live to love you and to make you happy and that's just part of who i am that's like my my belief in life that's like and i think that I when people listen to this like when they look at the stuff and they listen to our podcast they listen to stuff that they think that we live in a fairy tale it's like it's, it's beyond like it, it is not a fairy tale it's a consistent work ethic to mm -hmm. do what we do yeah and i think that you and i we already know each other's triggers and there'll be more. I mean, as, as, as we get older, as you know, things evolve and there's going to be more experiences to have, but we are consistently working on each other. And I think the more consistent that you stay to your partnership, to your relationship, you learn so much more that, you know, we have fights, but the fights are smaller amount of time. We choose, and they're predictable. We choose and they're wisely. Predictable. And, yeah. and, and that's the most important thing because when you're consistent, I mean, you, you tell me, Raul, you're so predictable because I know what you're going to get mad about. Yeah. You know what I'm going to get mad I know it's the same thing with you. Yeah. I could predict when I say, okay, shit, this happened. I know she's going to get pissed. Or yes. shit, this happened. So you prepare. Fight so I'm prepared, prepared because yeah. at least you're consistent in the way that, that you uh, live your life. And I'm yeah. consistent in the way I live my life. So the moment that you start putting the, the dots together, mm -hmm. it could be predictable. Yes. And this, they, the, I think the next step. Oh, I'll, we have more. Yeah, we have. I, it's, I mean, I gave this guy yeah, the whole presentation yeah. and it was, it was it was more detailed. There's but, so much we could talk about just in this alone. But another element, and I think it's key for men. I mean, I think it's for men and women, but at least for men is appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, because acknowledgement, acknowledgement is feedback for men. Yes. And I had this belief that I didn't need appreciation. I didn't need my woman to appreciate me. I didn't need my employees to appreciate me. I didn't need anybody to appreciate me. I know who I am. Yeah. And to realize that I work better when I'm appreciated. Of course. Who like, doesn't? I mean, it was an unconscious uh, thought for me because the moment that I started getting emails from people saying, Raul, you know, you changed my life. Raul, you did this. And I started realizing how much energy that brings me, you. that drives yeah. me when I get positive feedback. Yeah. At the same time, when I get no feedback at all, it makes me uncertain whether I'm making a difference or not. Mm -hmm. And when I get negative feedback, it makes me not want to do it because I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do this for? Yeah. I mean, especially in relationships, if you give me negative feedback, I'll take that negative feedback as you can improve. But if I continue to receive negative feedback after negative feedback after negative feedback, eventually I'm going to say, fuck, I'm not going to do it. It was the same thing that happened in the dancer partnership when we were dancing. As we were dancing, we prepare the steps, what step we're going to dance and the, the beginning was like, it was negative feedback. So to let, tell let's, them, frame, let's frame the exercise for them. Okay, so it's a, it was an exercise where you have a partner and you dance, there was no music. Right. So kind of like you have to pretend dance, but the one person tells the other person how to dance. Like I want this, I want to dance this way. So yes. give them a specific directions of what you want. And the other person was going to deliver based on those specific directions, yes. right? So in that, yes. in that exercise, I wasn't dancing with you. I had another partner. Yes. But that lady told me, okay, I want you to do this in this dance exercise. Okay, great. And the trainer said, I want you to uh, explain to your partner what, or no, not explain. I want you to think about a plan. So immediately I created a plan in my mind of how I want to deliver this experience to her. Yes. And then she said to the receiver, I want you to criticize everything that that person is doing. Yes. And that, thank you for framing that. That was perfect. Sorry, I was just jumping into it because I thought of it. Um, and then when they were giving the negative criticism, for me, it was horrible because I felt like, 
you know, oh my gosh, I wanted to just like curl up in a ball <laughs> and put a hoodie on and not anybody see me and start to cry and, you know, go into my little shell because that's what I usually do. And I don't work well into criticism. Like I'm thinking like who does? Mm. And in any partnership, like, you know, if you talk to your children the wrong way, if you talk to your husband the wrong way, if you talk to your employees the wrong way, how do they react? Yeah. And sometimes we use our words in a harsh way, you know, and we may not even be conscious of what we're saying or how we're doing it, but it's like that negative. And we think it's positive is, criticism. Yeah, we think yeah. it's like improving criticism. And, and then, yeah. so she gave us three chances. Yeah. She goes, okay, so the second chance, so I got the criticism. I didn't want to curl into a hoodie. Actually, for me, it was like, let me see how I can improve. Let me see how I can deliver a better experience. So I'm learning, oh. I'm taking the feedback. Because you drive on that. Because I drive in criticism. I mean, and that's, I, I drive on, on people, you know, saying things because okay. I want to prove that I could deliver, right? But the third time she says to do this and she still drove the criticism, my third time, I didn't care. I said, if I'm going to be the best at giving the, her an experience, I'm going to do the worst. And I don't care. And I, got, I was twirling her around oh. and I was twisting her around and I didn't care about her experience because... At that moment, you know you're playing a game that you're not going to win. Yeah, right. And then you know what happened for me, which was very surprising, and this is probably what happens to a lot of us. I took that anger that I was feeling and that rejection, and I turned it into revenge. Hmm. Wow. And I was not surprised. I was by the way. so <laughs> revengeful to this other woman. Like I felt so horrible for her. Like I did it, and I felt the energy of behind it was like revenge. It's like, it brings me back to our dating uh, times or our early marriage years. An early marriage years, revenge. Yes, that's a whole different version wow. of Vivian. I haven't seen her her version in a while, but and, I feel, and, I remember that very and revenge, vividly. And revenge alone, you know, like we could probably talk about this in another topic. Like it brings so much death into a partnership and i i just you know like literally like i wanted to go up to you and say i'm sorry and to like all these people that i keep thinking about like i was so revengeful like i did things in the wrong way but it's just bringing awareness to what what has happened and what can you do going forward to not do the same I'll, thing i'll tell you right now i want to be in your team next time all right i don't want to be against you the moment <laughs> that the revenge comes in you got to so appreciation stay away so from then Vivian. when we when we changed it to appreciation it was different it was like you know the desire to want to do better the desire to want to mm. dance the right way and and even like not not just have fun you know it was it was a different sense it was like a whole different energy like yeah, the when, whole room yeah when we did shifted. the exercise and they were giving us the feedback yeah, we yeah. actually improved and went to do things better and yes. it was it was it was natural yes so the last element of partnership is honor and authenticity which we could talk about like a whole topic about holding your space. This this means like holding your space, honoring yourself mm -hmm. and not bending, not collapsing your space for other people, honoring your space, who you are, and then honoring, allowing the other person to want on her space and, and to hold her ground yes, or his ground. And then for that to happen, you need to know who you truly are and what your space is and how much you will give in or take up or want it's to negotiations give in. it's yeah. a negotiation it's like the moment they said okay I, I need you to do this and you said okay i can do this but i could do this mm -hmm. and you're holding your space and i'm holding my space and then we'll combine the energies together to make it happen yeah so many times we just asked and we said okay i need to do this and get it done and you assume that's assume going to it's happen gonna get done yeah with the, with the lack of clarity or even saying this is what's going to happen if you get this done or also like expectations, which we've talked about in the past, is like you just because you ask, you expect things to get a, a certain way, but you have to ask, you have to be clear as to what you want, and you have to honor the other person and allow them to say yes, no, maybe I could do this and not the other in their own space and not, not go against it. Beautiful. So now we've given you a lot of elements of partnership. Uh, hopefully you, you took some notes down. Uh, if you haven't taken notes down, we're going to have this whole breakdown in the link in the podcast, whether it's in YouTube, in Facebook. Awesome. And uh, that way we could bring more value to our listeners. Yes. So the Thank one thing know. I got out of this podcast, Vivian, which, you know, is, it brings me back memories, is your revenge side. So I'm excited to see how we could play that. A role play in other areas in our lives. Bring out of, the revenge. Out of all the podcasts, you want revenge. Bring the revenge, Vivian. No, you don't want revenge. No, I, I don't want to be in that other side of receiving revenge. Okay. I want to. You like I wanna, the energy. I like the energy behind, behind the revenge. Okay, that's I like right. that naughtiness and the spicy 
that the revenge Vivian brings in. So that's a different part of a creativity and creating a, a different perspective in the partnership, which is like you get clear as to what you want. Dude, don't take, don't get I'll revenge. Bring it on. Don't get revenge of me. Let's just play with the energy okay. of that revenge so version of clear you. We'll as get to clear. What you want. We'll have an agreement, and we'll make sure that we follow through. Okay. All right. So follow us in Facebook. Follow us in YouTube. Follow us in iTunes. Make sure that you sign sign up or subscribe. Whatever it is that you need to do. Mm -hmm. Follow us everywhere except for our bedrooms. Learn it. Live, live it. Experience, experience it. it. Love, love life. life.